um, I'm honored uh, today. I had a brief meeting with uh, uh, this team from Allied Horn of Africa NGO, which uh, actually paid me a courtesy call. And I'm happy that this is uh, an, an, a new entrant, an NGO that is um, just starting off uh, work in uh, our region, the northern region. Um, just come to know that they have done their first uh, um, active um, um, uh, engagement today uh, in Garissa County, where they visited uh, two sub-counties, uh, Balambala, uh, or parts of two sub-counties, Balambala and Lagdera sub-counties, uh, and they distributed um, food to 1,100 families in 14 uh, different centers in those two sub-counties. Uh, quite, quite encouraging for a new NGO to start off so well, particularly at a time when actually uh, such support is required. As, as, uh, as you know, we are going through bad times, hard times rather, in terms of the drought. Uh, rains again have not um, come through as expected. And uh, such support, even if it's small, is, is always welcome. And I'm, 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 I must say I'm honored by this team, uh, this group, which is starting so well in the county. Uh, I hope to see more of uh, this kind of companies or other institutions or NGOs, which come with, uh, you know, hard, uh, you know, values uh, or real values to their communities. Food distribution, water distribution at a time like this is actually uh, what we most welcome. And I must say I appreciate this group. Uh, I hope uh, that they will do more of this uh, in the days to come. Uh, and therefore, I, I look forward to working with them more closer uh, in the future. Maybe your message to the other institutions who are willing to come and maybe intervene at this time? Well, yeah, I obviously... This is a time when we are looking forward to such, uh, you know, institutions to come forward, particularly as we look forward to the coming of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is first approaching, and uh, given the situation on the ground, we will definitely lead a lot of food distribution, a lot of water distribution, a lot of support, uh, as also the schools have been opened up. Uh, it's our intention to ensure that we retain as many of our children in the schools uh, despite the drought. So, uh, yes, indeed, we look forward and we want and we'll appreciate uh, many of those institutions like this one's here to be around to help us in, in, uh, in mitigating the, the hardships uh, that we are uh, seeing. Thank you so much. Present. The result of the drought situation that we are uh, seeing in the larger East African region, uh, northern Kenya is uh, among the worst hit uh, regions uh, in, the, in the area. Uh, so uh, at the moment, what we have started is uh, some. In, um, we have started uh, some food distribution uh, in collaboration with the county government. Yesterday, uh, we have um, distributed uh, food distribution, food to over a thousand uh, families uh, in 14 settlements within uh, the Garissa uh, county in two sub counties. That is uh, Lagdera and uh, Balambala. Um, the families have really. Um, uh, uh, appreciated the efforts that we have doing, as well as also the uh, the, the county government. The plan is uh, to provide this assistance to the, the, the larger northern Kenya, that is uh, Wajia, Garissa and Madera counties. We have initiated this already in Madera county. Uh, Garissa is the second country that now we are doing, trying to support, give it assistance. And uh, hopefully in the coming uh, weeks and days, uh, we will be uh, moving to Wajia county as well to provide the same assistance. And uh, um, we are actually currently working on uh, some bit of uh, advocacy for funds. And uh, we are reaching out to several donors, see how best they can be able to fundraise, uh, so that they can be able to design uh, you know, bigger and larger resilience uh, programs for this part of the country. This cash transfer is always the best, the best option in terms of um, giving you know, dignity to the people that we serve instead of giving food. Uh, and of course, it's all logistical uh, challenges. So as soon as we design the, the programs that we, we're currently working on, cash relief will be really the better uh, option for us.
Well, um, uh, what we're doing is currently we're just giving uh, much of uh, the work to the communities. Um, uh, the communities have uh, what you call village uh, development committees. These are actually committees that are currently helping us in terms of, uh, you know, targeting, in terms of uh, beneficiary selection. And these are actually one of the guys who are currently at the end of them working with them. So we're really giving the community its own, you know, um, power so they can be able to see and uh, select the, the, the most vulnerable among themselves. I think we have, um, uh, we have supported over 1,100 uh, families in the 14 settlements that we have uh, provided assistance so far. Yeah. There are more of uh, the current uh, food items that uh, is used uh, I mean, across the country, that is um, flour, sugar, oil um, uh, and uh, salt. Here is the village of the village of Garafura, the village of the village of the village ni ndio ile usaidizi ya kwanza ambayo tumepokea katika kwa Light NGO. Na hii chakula ambayo umetuleta ni chakula ambayo inatutosha, ni chakula ambayo inafaa imeletwa wakati ambayo inafaao. Hakuna uh, hakuna mfugo ile hii na shida ya ukame imezidi. Ni watoto na wakina mama tu ndio wanaishi hapa. Hakuna mahali ingine ama usaidizi ingine hii jamii wa mayai kupokea. Na mfugo imeenda mbali hadi boda ya Somali ama upande wa Tana River hakuna mtu mwingine ambaye inasaidia na tungependa watu zaidishie hii usaidizi kwa sisi administrator tunasimamia upande wa usalama hatutaki eh, mfurugano itoke kwa hivyo hao wenyewe ndio walichagawana na walipatia venerable families ambaye wanafaa kupatiwa chakula hakuna corruption ambaye inaweza kulete ni nidhamu wazee wenyewe wamesikizana naye na hakuna mtu mwingine ambaye inaingilia Women and children are the most affected during these tough times, in this drought situation in northern Kenya. And uh, Alight is really, really determined to intervene. And uh, with the help of our donors, we will reach so many lives. The drought situation in the northeast region of Kenya, I think this is unprecedented. We have never had such a drought in the last more than 40 years. Uh, the region has never had such a drought. It is at the, at the worst level, actually. Communities have been affected across the three, the, the three counties of Wajia, Mandera, and Gariza. Uh, the situation is so dire that there are no, there's no water. All the plants have dried. Rivers have dried. Uh, water, uh, most families have moved to, uh, some close to Ethiopia, others moved to Somalia. A good number of also families have moved to neighboring districts of like uh, Tano River, Siolo. And this potentially, because of scarce resources, the chance of conflict over water and uh, pasture by, between communities is very high. Apart from that, uh, most sectors, especially the education sector, will be affected by this uh, drought. Uh, most families will be forced to move away with their children. Uh, most schools are likely not to open in good time. Uh, and especially those in secondary and higher institution will be most affected. In the Somali community, livestock is everything. It is their livelihood, it's the source of income, it's their bride. Loss of livestock means loss of uh, uh, livelihood and therefore many families will come to the major cities, uh, live in a small groups and the outskirts as what is called uh, pastoralist dropouts. A pastoralist dropout can only uh, revive himself after getting animals. He may not be able to venture into other business but the, the only thing they're very much familiar with and they're used to is uh, rearing animals. The livestock, three categories of livestock are mainly rare in this region. We have the goats and sheep, we have the cattle, and we have uh, the camel. As of, as of the moment, what is, the goats and sheep are almost extinct because the, they're dying on a daily basis. The cows, almost many families have lost all their cows, except the few have moved to other regions. The camels are in a very bad state. In some regions like Mandera, people have started reporting the death of camel. The death of camel is an extreme situation that shows that if the camel cannot withstand the drought, that tells you the magnitude and the measure with which it is affecting the, the community. For the goats in the, in the nomadic community, the goats like an ATM. It's like your bank. You can go anytime and withdraw your cash. You have an active ATM where you have got goats because that is the, that's the source. You can take it to the market, buy food, buy everything, pay for hospital bills, uh, pay for nursery, school fees, and everything. 
uh, that, that's why we call it a, like a saving account or an ATM. Uh, the cattle, which is now the second category, is treasured. Uh, the community looks at it like a current account. When there's need, when there's serious need, they go and now sell one or two of them to alleviate that particular uh, issue that, that they are they're confronted with. But the camel in normal circumstances is like a fixed deposit. Camels are not for sale. Camels are only sold when there's a serious issue, for example, like death, for example, like a child who's going to a serious institution or fundraising, or when there's a leadership opportunity. Those are the kind of events that when cameras are either sold or, or, or somebody, a religious old man wants to go for Hajj. So we, as we are talking now, the two major sources of income, which is uh, the goats and the cows, are dying at a rate at which the chances that if we don't get uh, early rains in this uh, long rains that's coming in, in March and uh, April, and if the rains do not come in good time, there are chances that this community will close those two accounts. The saving account or the ATM will be lost, and what is called the current account will be also gone. And very few, because the camel is a prestigious animal, very few families have camel. And often, the camel do not stay with the family. They are moved to very far distances, and they may not alleviate the problems. Um, already we have seen, in, uh, for example, the estimate we are given by the, the local government in the three counties, Madeira, more than 60,000 families are already vulnerable to the drought. In Wajia, I think the number has even gone above Mandera. And Gariza, I think, is also the worst affected, almost talking to the tune of 70 to 100,000 families have been affected. And if those families do not get food aid in good time, they don't get water, they don't get health services, that means the situation will deteriorate into famine. And next time we shall be talking of human death. And my appeal, as a local and as also somebody who has served in this region and as a development worker, is that we need timely support for these communities in terms of food, in terms of health, uh, uh, health. There's an outbreak of cholera already in Mandera. These are clear signs to show with the, the level of malnutrition in the children is also very high. I think it is time because the, 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 I do not have the figure for, for G and Gariza, but Mandera, we are talking of almost a million children who are facing malnutrition. So, and most of them are particularly in the category of ECD and blue. That means uh, definitely the early child education sector is, going to, is most affected and the schools are likely to be closed. So, we need to take seriously the issue of uh, the drought in northern Kenya and uh, timely, you show timely action. Uh, if timely actions were taken by both the government and by the also the development workers and the international institutions, UN agencies, uh, we are going to see human catastrophe and that is my appeal that we move first to save this situation. Thank you very much. Angalia, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Ya <laughs> kira <laughs> Bak bro. Thank you. 